uh, Intel announced a new workstation uh, chip. And I guess the first thing I'll say is get a little context is uh, workstations are used for uh, design. Uh, they're used for um, they're used by uh, programmers. Uh, a lot of uh, 3D magic that you see pretty much everywhere is driven by a workstation. Workstation market also has certified software, right? Let's say like Dassault or, or something like that, that it's not like, you know, a PC market where, you know, everything should is not expected to run. Uh, these are so intertwined into the hardware that, that they have to be uh, certified. So I think the big news here is, is this was um, uh, the latest version of Xeon getting integrated into the workstation line. And, you know, every company has choices. Processor companies have choices on how they can attack the market. And Intel really has a dual pronged uh, approach, which is uh, hit it with a, a Xeon type of architecture uh, for the highest performance, the highest bandwidth, and then hit it with core architecture, uh, more likely on, on workloads that aren't certified and don't need the massive amount of, of IO, you know, RDIM, ECC memory, uh, and, and things uh, like that. I think the biggest differentiator about um, these new platforms is, is really uh, IO. I mean, a gigantic... And a, and a gigantic amount of uh, L3 cache, which really helps to get optimal performance for those highest uh, performance workloads. I think in this case, less on core count, because quite frankly, I think uh, AMD and for that matter, uh, Ampere uh, will bring more cores. But I think this is about IO uh, and, and bandwidth. You can also get I, what I'm super interested to see is how some of Intel's integrated uh, AI features uh, like AMX and uh, Bfloat, Bfloat 16 by a deep learning boost get used by ISVs uh, out there because this is an area, as, as we both know, whether it's on-chip or off-chip uh, AI, as long as it's uh, integrated into the um, uh, close, closely coupled into the processor, it can, can really do some uh, great stuff. Yeah, you hit a lot of it, Pat. Uh, you know, this is a big, you know, I guess there's two things Intel's competing with. Intel's competing with the other names you mentioned, the AMDs and Amperes, but they're also competing with themselves. And yeah. by themselves, it's like every generation needs to show meaningful improvements and be driving, you know, reasons to their customers to upgrade their workstations. You know, right now you're, you're battling cycles. You're battling companies that are slowing down their purchasing cycles. You're battling companies that are hiring less people, less programmers, less developers. Having said that, um, a lot of those key functions and companies continue to be important despite other maybe lesser important and, and, and roles that were harder to define being minimized in bigger companies. So developers still have a big, big role to play. I, I, I think I, it's worth double clicking on what you said about the accelerator strategy, because that is a big part of the AI story. You know, you're seeing a kind of a continuum of AI on chip to AI through, uh, you know, software and Intel is really leaning into software here, seeing how that actually drives better performance from the workstations is going to be something that the market's going to want to keep its eye on. And of course, it's users as you know, workstations aren't quite gaming, but there is a bit of a cult of these kinds of devices where you want the people using them to swear by them and to become the my workstation is better than your workstation types. It's just what's going on. So, you know, the specs look promising. The biggest thing I noticed, though, is the significant generation to generation improvement, which is what the company's really touting. Not to say they're not going to want to compete with AMD and others, but the, the real guesstimate for me is that people who are already running on Intel workstations will carry over and be looking for their next Intel workstation. Um, not sure if there's enough here to get the, the brand uh, switch, to drive, to drive a switch from one brand to another. Of course, that's what all the companies are doing is fighting for market share. And the last thing, of course, when I say competing with itself, it's got an aggressive timeline here, Pat. It's saying pre-order February 15th and availability beginning in March. I promise you everybody in the world is going to be looking to see if those things start shipping in March because that's what Intel's up against. But uh, promising incremental improvements here. Yeah, you know, AMD has done a really good job with its uh, Threadripper Pro, and that's what this 
uh, align aligns with and you know Threadripper Pro is is based on a server part uh, as well and in fact when I was at AMD we came out with the first uh, server based uh, workstation part called the uh, Athlon FX and it's kind of been a a staple uh, the whole time.